Hi everybody, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. I apologize for my absence, but it's been busy with work and school. But yes, I am still alive, and uh, I am here to make you another lab video. In this video, we are going to be concentrating 3% hydrogen peroxide into whatever concentration we feel like. Uh, actually, the top out is probably maybe around 35% because then decomposition becomes a problem. But uh, So yeah, this method of concentrating hydrogen peroxide just involves simply boiling it down, which is possible. You'll notice that if you leave hydrogen peroxide out for a long time, especially if it's away from sunlight, uh, you'll, you'll be left with like a syrupy liquid in a puddle. And that syrupy liquid will be extremely reactive because uh, it's, the hydrogen peroxide has, has simply concentrated itself. So um, what we basically have here is 3% stabilized hydrogen peroxide that you buy at any drugstore. I know a lot of syntheses require concentrated hydrogen peroxide. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we're just going to basically force evaporation by heating it up a little bit. Now, of course, heating the hydrogen peroxide causes it to decompose. So we can expect some decomposition to happen of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. But um, as long as we keep the heat low enough, the decomposition will not be too much of a problem. So the name of the game here is you want a, an extremely clean beaker, as you can see. I just washed this out. There's a little water in the bottom, but um, you want it as clean and scratch free as possible because every little scratch, every little piece of dirt in there um, tends to decompose the hydrogen peroxide. So you want it dust free, absolutely clean. Uh, you also want it to be as wide mouth as possible obviously because the more surface area you have of the liquid, uh, the more evaporation you're going to get. So this is my widest beaker and my hot plate's not much bigger so that kind of works out. And of course you're going to need your 3% hydrogen peroxide. And this is cool because generally the food grade stuff costs like 30 bucks for a gallon and it's, uh, you know, maybe 30 percent but then shipping is hazmat fees and all that stuff because it's not really carried in local stores at least not that i've seen so yeah it can cost you a pretty penny to get some of that whereas these two quarts of three percent um they cost me 99 cents at costco so this is just like swan brand three percent hydrogen peroxide and this is oh this is also swan but it's like an older bottle anyway so you just got to do a little math to find out how much 3% is going to make you whatever concentration you need. So, say I wanted 30% hydrogen peroxide, I'd need to use 10 times the amount of this than I, that I would, or of the amount that I want. So, say I want like 10 milliliters of 30%, uh, I need to use 100 milliliters of 3%, obviously. But you might not add an extra 10% or so to uh, basically accommodate for decomposition during the evaporation process. So, anyway, my synthesis calls for, uh, I believe... 235 milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide, and I'm concentrating it to um, to 30% or thereabouts. So I need to essentially simmer this down, or simmer 235 milliliters to 25 or uh, 23.5 milliliters. So honestly, you can just guesstimate because it's 200. Let's we'll do 250. That'll account for the decomposition. Or a lot of it anyway. Alright, and then we just turn this on high. Um, you do not want this to start boiling. When you start seeing little bubbles in the bottom, turn the heat off or turn the heat down. And I found that it's like right between 3 and 4 on this hot plate that will keep the hydrogen peroxide steaming. You want it to steam uh, because obviously you're losing water, but um, you don't want it to boil at any point. So, and of course, if your beaker's not clean, you're going to get a lot of decomposition. So, I will come back when this is uh, steaming like it should be, and I'll show you that process. And then, of course, the finished product we'll do some tests on. So, until then. Okay, here we are, an hour and a half later. And as you can see, the 250 milliliters we put in is now down to about 150 milliliters. Um, this is steaming at about the rate it needs to be. It's probably difficult to see because I don't have a dark background, but it's just a, basically a steaming cup of water is what it looks like. Um, anyway, there's some very fine bubbles, as you can see in the solution, and that's just the hydrogen peroxide decomposing. Uh, that's normal. That's about a normal rate. You'll notice if I get any little piece of dust in there, it will. Uh, you'll definitely see it. it'll be a little stream of bubbles that'll follow the dust particle around, and it'll cause significant decomposition. So you want to keep this as clean and dust-free as possible. So, like, don't put a fan blowing on it and stuff to increase evaporation, because you're just going to get dust in it. Uh, on the same note, don't try and stir it don't try and stick a thermometer in it or whatever because, again, uh, if you introduce any dirt, you're going to have a problem with decomposition. Uh, furthermore, um, you don't know if this was because of the beaker is so clean. It could actually be over the boiling point right now uh, as a superheated liquid, and 
the introduction of some small nucleation point could cause it to spontaneously boil. I don't think that should happen because there are already bubbles in this, which would probably cause that. But I wouldn't do it just in case. I know um, Mythbusters did something about this before with a cup of water in the microwave, and then when they stuck a spoon in it, it all instantly boiled and threw hot water everywhere. And this would be a lot dangerous, more dangerous than hot water because it's a hot, well, not right now, but it's a hot concentrated oxidizer. And um, it's hotter than the boiling point of water because it's got hydrogen peroxide in it. So, anyway, this is what it's supposed to look like. And I will be back when it's down to about 25 milliliters, which is way down there. So it should be another hour and a half or so. But it's nice because with this setting, I can just leave it unattended. All right. Okay, it's been several hours, and I had to go to work, so I left this cool, and as you can see, it's gone from 250 milliliters all the way down to just about 50, and uh, since at 250 to 50, that's a five times decrease, which means that the concentration should have increased five times, and since we started with 3%, that means this should be about 15%, and to show you the increase in concentration, I've prepared here two test tubes, and in each, in the bottom of each one is... Um, a small piece of manganese dioxide, and manganese dioxide acts as a catalyst which will decompose the hydrogen peroxide into the oxygen and water. Uh, so we should be able to see some effervescence there of oxygen um, when I add these samples. So I'm going to add some 3% and I'm going to add some of our 15% and we'll, we'll see the difference. Uh, first we get some 3%. Okay, so put some 3% in here. As you can see, my camera will focus on it. Maybe I'll add some more. There we go. You can clearly see the oxygen gas bubbling out of it at a pretty fair rate. Okay, and now let's try some of our 30%, or our, our, sorry, our 15%. I'm not going to use a lot of it because I need this for something else, but um, as you can see, the reaction is far more vigorous, and you actually hear it. If I put this up to the camera's microphone, and you're bubbling out of there. So there, that was concentration of hydrogen peroxide, and in fact you can actually use the volume of gas produced from this to determine the concentration. All you simply do is get a graduated cylinder, like this, and just uh, invert it, fill it with water, no, fill it with water, then invert it into a tray of water, and then run a tube from the top of the test tube, you know, maybe a stopper with a hole in it, a small tube, into the graduated cylinder, so you can measure how much gas is produced. And um, as a general rule, 3% uh, hydrogen peroxide will produce about 10 times its volume in gas. So if you had one milliliter of 3%, you would end up with um, 10 milliliters of oxygen gas in the tube. So, and obviously you can you know, use proportions from there to determine anything higher in concentration. Well, that was concentration of hydrogen peroxide. I'm Doug, this is my lab. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, rate, and comment.